<laughs> Alright guys, welcome back! My fellow Ghost Technician, it's your boy Hunt2 Haunter. Today, we're going to prom! Monster prom! Make sure you like, favorite, comment, subscribe, it always helps the channel, and I'm about to go into a uh, monstrous harem. <clears throat> voice interjections, yay or nay. Awesome voice effects, make your own voices. I'll make my own, it's fine. <clears throat> Uh, one player, because I'm a sad little shit. Uh, full game, sh short game. We'll do the short version for now. Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really are. Were. Oh, okay. Oh, I like all of them. I like all of them. This is our character. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the shadow guy. Name? Uh, uh, Oz. Oz feels good. He looks like his name would be Oz. Uh, I'm a, I'm he. I'm he. I like how you can be a they them. It's, it's dope. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we f fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. <laughs> Damien Levey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Sounds like my boyfriend. Scott Howell, a werewolf athlete who was compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly large heart. Liam Leliancourt, 4XX, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was a truly lovable dork. Holly Geist, a party ghost with insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. And Vera Oberlin, a mean self-made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But, as I already said... We're young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. <clears throat> Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, and they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever trademark will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats this will this way each of you will start by having stats that will better reflect your true self ah, okay okay dnd dnd logic I, I i know the drill i know i know that one doesn't shake hold on yeah there we go i know the drill i know the drill hell yeah let's start be a visionary oh, hold on wait what be a visionary. What will be the next big social media craze? Bullshit! It's your regular social network, but each time someone shares news that isn't only been to be a And from now on, socially awkward guy named Robert. Greg, the literally Greg. Okay. I'm just clicking random shit. I don't know what I'm fucking doing. Democracy is just broken. What would be the best way to choose the leaders of the modern society? Get it, 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 Is that all? All right, let's check our stats. Okay, our stat. We got seven smarts, six boldness, four creativity. That's not great. Charm. We got five. Fun. We got four. Oh, okay. And seven to money. Okay, so we got auditorium. 
library, class, gym, outdoors, and the bathroom. Start with class. At that you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary objective at this high school. Gain two smarts. Okay, okay. There you see Damien and Miranda chatting and being a nosy little bitch. You decide to insert yourself into the conversation. These two? Okay. I look forward to this advent to this adventure, so is there anything more wonderful than getting insight into the lives of commoners? You better not pull that shit the whole time. My dads are lord of he Dads? Hey, hey. Uh, let's a hell you know, technically I'm royalty too. Are you though? Damon rolls his eyes and turns to you. Mrs. Panthera paired us up for our hands-on homework assignment going on to adventure. Apparently I have some anger issues and a thirst for violence that I should be channeling into something productive. <laughs> like a thirst for violence isn't productive in any of itself. And I'm supposed to work with being more independent. Which is so strange since I told my ladies and gentlemen in waiting to fix that for me last week. Ugh. I wonder what sort of adventure might give us the wonderful experience we need to fix our perceived but ob obviously non-existent flaws. Eh. Uh, okay. Go on a deep quest to steal beautiful pearls from a scary kraken, journey to a volcano, have a hot time at a fire strip club. Strip club kraken. I feel like strip club would be fun time. You expect me, royalty, a princess, a royal princess who is royal to attend some vile sex show? Yeah. And you expect me, a demon, to put up with that attitude at a strip club? And surely, if you feel the stirrings of passion in your loins, it would spur the stirrings of passion in your fist. What? Miri, did you just make a masturbation joke? Egads! Of course not. I meant that if you were so riled... Up over naked methods, surely that would explode and spill out. Terrible choice of words. Into your proclivity for violence, you shouldn't be tempted to have any feelings whatsoever. The best way for you to lose your violent instincts is to sit in the dark room with no stimuli whatsoever. Well, maybe that's the best way for you to learn to be independent too. Maybe it is. They spend their adventure locked in separate dark rooms. Um, okay, you lose two fun and one charm. Fuck! <laughs> Supposed to have fun! Okay. Okay, I... I kind of want to vibe with the... Geist girl. Scott and Polly are sitting together laughing. Their metaphorical asses off. Do Damien, do Damien. Girl, I'm Damien. Look at my stupid red face. I use violence to cover up the fact that I have been brought up to revere a toxic version of masculinity, which has annihilated me from my own true emotions. <laughs> you sound just like him. Okay, okay. To Vera. I'm Vera. I'm very smart and my hair is pretty and all my friends look up to me because I am a strong, independent woman. Scott, I'm... Not sure you understand how impressions work. I'm not Scott, I'm Vera. You can tell me because I said my name just now. Okay, what about you, Oz? Got any good impressions? Just one, but it's a real doozy. Okay. If I do the impression of one of the characters, will it make the other one laugh or will it make the person I'm doing laugh? Because I... Uh, okay. Woof woof, look at me, I am Scott, I don't know how to do an impression. I know you're doing an impression of me because you said my name, but... Oh my god, that sounds exactly like him! It does? Yeah, remember that time that we took impressions class together? There's, there's an impressions class. <laughs> and we had to introduce ourselves? Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I guess I did say, woof woof, it's me Scott, a dog boy who is bad at impressions. But... 
I didn't yell like that. I'm sorry. Are you real, Scott? There's two absolutely identical werewolves in front of me, and I can't tell the difference. My cat is scratching my door. <clears throat> Polly insists on a smooching contest to determine who is the real Scott. You end up winning in more ways than one. Let's go. Also, I love how they're all legal. Otherwise, this would be very awkward. <laughs> Dear God. All right. Uh, let's go back. A day during recess, you start a half an hour rave that goes full fucking crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point, there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain two fun. Let's go! Let's go! Gain that two fun, baby. Let's go. Suddenly, a chill runs through you, as if a very fabric of reality is in danger. Scanning your surroundings, you quickly discover the reason for your feeling. Polly and Damien are together, and they're bored. Oh, sorry to hear that. Damien! 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 What? I must have fallen asleep for a sec, because nothing's on fire. I know, right? Nothing's crazy has happened in the last 47 minutes. And I'm dead. I mean, I'm literally actually dead. But also, I am dead because of how bored I am. What if we just... Oh, fuck, I'm so bored. I can't even think of something to do to not be bored. No, somebody help us, somebody please, cause a sexy problem. Break the seven seals and release Kralik through the world fucker. <laughs> Send in the party goblins. What? Okay, alright. I feel like the world fucker will entertain Damien even more. I don't know what the goblins will do, and I'm curious. Let's, let's do goblins. You blow the... Party goblin whistle that you got from a cereal box and lavishly dressed goblins pour in from every door and window. They mill around their sharp suits and long dresses, sipping martinis and making polite small talk. Dude, lame. These aren't party goblins. These are cocktail party goblins. Oh, my bad. I, I don't know. How could you make a mistake like this? Now we'll be stuck here for hours until we find an excuse to leave early. Before you can respond, a goblin corners you and spends two hours explaining the finer points of bridge maintenance. <laughs> You're never getting those two hours back. And you lose two boldness and one foot. Damn it, we just got it! Fuck. Oh my god, we are... Low on a lot of stats. We are low on a lot of stats. We gotta get those back. Okay, okay. Uh, think, think, think. Library. What will we do with the library? That day you spend some time on the library's PCs managing your start kicker. You deceived lots of people with the sensational video and impossible promises. Nice. You gained a lot of money, but almost everything goes to cover costs and you only keep plus two money. It's fine. Getting ready to leave when you get a text from Polly. Hey, baby, let's party. How can you refuse such a formal missive? 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 Message. You track her down immediately. Hey, you got my text. That's good, because I need some help brainstorming. I'm going to a party tonight, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be lame. And that needs to change. What you got? See, it's a costume party, you know, where everyone dresses up as their favorite humans. <laughs> Fuck yes. I'm going, to a se I'm going as a sexy tax attorney, but I'm not even sure the sexy, sexy tax attorney can rescue this party from the depths of lamitude. So, got any ideas to help spice things up? Oh, you got some ideas, and they're the spiciest. Spike the punch with mandrake root. It turns monsters into actual humans. Okay, go as a sexy tax attorney. I'll go as a sexy tax evader. Ah, uh, she likes to have fun. She likes to get a little crazy. Mm. I feel like this this mm. so smart. Later that night at the party. <laughs> this is nuts. Look at all these humans in human costumes. Georgina at the party. Owlbear totally just turned into a sumo wrestler. And Larry the Lich looks exactly like a former United States president, Abe Lincoln. 
Oh, Larry doesn't just look like Lincoln. He is Lincoln. He has all of Lincoln's memories up to the moment of death. Every newly transformed human at the party comes complete with a full lifetime of memories. A childhood family friends. They have no recollection of their lives as a monster and are fully currently going insane of the cognitive dissociance. <laughs> Manny the Manicore just turned into a retired cop who is screaming for his <laughs> strange wife and two sons. Pranked. <laughs> In about four hours, all of these newly created people will revert to their previous forms, essentially murdering these new identities. Lol. In the meantime, you and Polly have a great time scaring the shit out of actual humans and streaming it online. You gain two creativity, one fun. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ah. Uh! See, I'm going for the ghost girl because, you know, ghost. So, uh, I hope we make this work. Alright, cafeteria, cafeteria. Uh, we over here. Polly and Miranda sit together, surrounded by Miranda's customary crowd of serfs. So, wait, you've actually got serfs who eat for you? Well, of course. I find eating to be terribly undignified. So, I almost never do it. What the fuck? <laughs> Hey, me neither! What other kinds of crazy serves do you got? Well, I have a serve who goes to the bathroom for me, a serve who... <laughs> to experience difficult emotions for me, and a serve for keeping my silverware in alphabetical order. WHAT THE FUCK?! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I even have a surfing server standing on top of whatever I go surfing. Wow, that's a lot of serves! <laughs> hey, yo. Yeah, it's a fair amount. It's the only limit of my imagination. Unfortunately, my imagination surf has imagined a way to escape from servtum. So now I'm out of ideas. Well, I'm sure with the help of Oz, we could probably think of a dope new kind of surf. Oh, God. Oh, is that so? I can't wait. Well, you're on the spot now. What will it be? Okay. Ooh, Miranda, you should get a puppy surf. It's not actually a surf. It's just a fitting cute dog. You should get a party surf. Paul... Polly, a serve to experience your hangovers for you. <sighs> See, I like the puppy idea, but I feel like Polly would really like the uh, hangover thing, but I don't want to expose her. What's the play? What's the play? What's the play? I, mm, one's for Miranda, one's for Polly. I'm gonna go with Polly. A sir for me? I couldn't possibly. Why not? I do it all the time. But isn't it wrong to make someone else experience the negative consequences of your actions? Well, like I said, I do it all the time, and Father says I can do no wrong. Therefore, it's probably fine. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. Let's hire some dude to deal with the withdrawal symptoms. Hire? Polly, dearest, we don't pay our serves. We don't? Sweet deal! <laughs> Polly has a burlesque hangover surf she can find, and the two of you go out for the night of your lives. The surf is dead in the morning from an epic hangover, but the memories are still worth the second-degree manslaughter. Fuck okay. yeah. Ah. Uh. Alright, we, we gotta boost some of our stats, guys. We gotta boost some of our stats. Uh, let's go here. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging in the bathrooms, you give zero shits and you gain two boldness. Okay, okay. On your way out, you spot Polly still wearing the lab coat she stole from that human party the other night. She takes it off and throws it at you to get your attention. Yo, 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 the human party convinced me I want to be a scientist, but not just any kind, a party scientist. What's a party scientist, you ask? Why, just a scientist who's dedicated to discovering the secret of the raddest party. How'd I end up with party girl? I don't do parties, I'm a fucking introvert. Though a series of extremely scientific per experiments, I aim to discover what exactly makes a party good. So, I can distill whatever it is into a vital and trick it. Uh -huh. Or, you know, you could just have a really dope party all the time. Anyway, I'm going to a bar, bu bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah. Okay, I wanted to make sure I read that right. A bar mitzvah tonight. And I need your scientific advice. What can you do to push this party over the edge? 
electric slide, but with actual electricity chemistry. Later that night! Yes! I've done it! I had to tear the heart out of an atomic bomb, but I did it! I've isolated the element party room. The life of the party. Now, I slip the solution into the bar mitzvah's water supply. The effects are instantaneous. All around you, boys are becoming men, and men are becoming party animals. And not just that. All around the bar mitzvah, all around the city, the bar mitzvah's water supply was also the city's water supply. You party so hard, you cause serious damage to your local infrastructure. Mayor Grim Reaper declares the next day National Hangover Day. Whoa, what just happened? Oh, wait, I remember. Science! Chemical warfare has never been so fun. You gained two small. Yes! Oh, I need charm. Shit, we need charm. How do we get charm? Uh, how do I. How would I get charm? Perhaps auditorium. Buy some shit. Uh, I'm good. What do they need them add charm? Doubt. No. Oh, I just wasted a day. Fuck. You approach Scott and Polly's table to find them crouched behind a pile of jelly desserts plotting. Thank bros if you're here, bro. Come join our huddle. Maybe you're curious about what a huge pile of jelly jam gel gelatinous dessert cups. Well, no wonder. We're going for the jelly prize. Yeah, we're going to win it. If we collect the foil cover for 100 jelly desserts, we'll be the lucky winners of one free jelly dessert. Ah! But, right, now... Okay, so we need one more, Scott. We need one more. We need one more! You give them your jelly dessert, but already you threw it at a bird person you hate. Guess you've already got to make a choice. Uh, steal the final jelly dessert from a jelly dessert factory. Make like a puppy dog and beg. All things are sweeter than actually achieve pity. Is the ceiling wrong? No, Scott, that's a myth! Like hangovers in the afterlife! <laughs> right you are. But if the afterlife is real, why are you a ghost? There's no time for metaphysics, Scott! We got a heist to plan! No, coach's ceiling is wrong, unless you're stealing a ball or a base or victory from the jaws of defeat. Actually, it seems like sports are mostly about stealing. Well, that settles it. Time for stealing. One fake bus, one really woolly mammoth, and a brutal running gun battle later. You finally secure one jelly cup. A lot of words, God, which you turn in. And then the jelly cup, one free jelly cup. Scott is too upset by all the violence that you split your free jelly cup with Polly. Worth it. I didn't boost anything? Oh, shit. Oh, God. Uh, moment of truth, guys. Moment of truth. Shit. Auditorium. Uh... That day, an epic dodgeball takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You get two charm. Yes, we got the charm! But none of that matters. You're late to meet Polly for more party experiments. All right, our research is progressively well so far, but we've got very limited sample prize size. Just need to make any party the best. So tomorrow morning, we're going to crash a funeral. If we can make that fun, we can make anything fun. So, brainstorm time. How can we get the fun in funerals? Possess the body of the deceased. Bring them back for the last party. Bouncy castle. Later that night. Aw, oh, shit. Woo, that was awesome. I was totally inside that dude. And then he was like, does anyone else want to say a few words? And I was like, ooh, ooh me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they totally freaked out. I would so fucking do that. And I was like, let's turn this funeral into a wedding. And I got married to like 11 people. <laughs> Wore all the windows now, widows now because I left that dude in a heap of the dance floor. But whatever weddings rule. <laughs> hey, Oz, you know what? I think we're getting really close to the true formula of the rad party. You're the best science partner I've ever had. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 
You guess she hasn't lost the science partners. You doubt that she even knows the real definition of science, but she's too happy for you to correct her now. Come on, the night's still young. Let's turn an all-nighter's laundromat into an epic rave. Those washing machines don't know what hit them. You gain two creativity, one fun. Hey, hey, hey. The monster prom draws near. Who are you asking? Oh, you already know. Polly? You wanna go? Ask Polly? I'm asking. What? Prom? Of course! Prom night will be another perfect opportunity to conduct our experiments in party science. So clever of you. That's why you're the best science partner ever. And that's not what you meant, but sure, why not? Sooner than expected, prom night is here, and the two of you are finally ready to crack the ultimate party formula. You free some wild animals and do lots of ecstasy. <laughs> you awaken the dead and even do the dance of joy. Everything is perfect. You flee floatingly and fl... fl you feel floaty and full of energy. You see beautiful shining lights, and you feel connected to everyone. Obviously, most of that is thanks to the ecstasy. But still, you feel like you have conquered the night, and you put a flag with your names on the peak of life itself. Then dawn comes, and now you're on the hill by the sea, watching the sun slowly come up. No idea how you got there, but who cares? You're at peace, watching the gentle tide of the morning, when you realize Polly has her hand over yours. She looks at you. You know what, Oz? I think that this might be the Molly talking, but I think I finally got it. All those parties have been having wildly different, yet all of them have been the very best. I've put a lot of thought into it, and I can only think of one thing they all had in common. I think the formula to the perfect party must be sharing it with the right people. You don't answer. You just hold her hand as you spend the morning watching the sun slowly come up over the sea together. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but what does kill you makes you a sweet kick-ass ghost. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, let's get it. Yay! I win! Fuck yeah! Those three weeks may be the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we keep on living our lives, falling in love, battling a friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like that? Like it always does, life happens. It was wonderful. Polly took a summer job as the ghost of Christmas present. <laughs> and spent most of her time partying. There was almost no work because, you know, it was summer. Liam honed his most admirable skill and got a job with it. He now designs filters. I, I'm tired. Vera kept being fierce, strong, and stunning. Some haters once said adult life and would put that mean bitch in her place. You know what? Vera ended up making adult life on her own, bitch. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle for monster prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in the way, called you 